with the utter chaos of our social media feeds and the amount of life admin we all have to do, it's easy to miss out on the genuinely great things happening in the world. So for the next 10 to 15 minutes, I don't know how long this video is gonna be, I haven't edited it yet. I wanna go through each month of 2023 and tell you a few good things that happened each month. And hopefully at the end of this video, it'll leave you feeling a little bit more optimistic about the state of the planet. No doubt I'm gonna miss some good news stories, but that's what the comment section's for. So please add any good news stories that I've missed down below. So 2023 kicked off with some news that Brazil had made a groundbreaking pledge to end deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. And following this pledge, in the first half of 2023, deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon had already declined by a third compared to the previous year. The Amazon has been called the lungs of the earth and plays a crucial role in our global ecosystem. So this isn't just a win for Brazil, but for all of us around the world. Spain announced that it would charge tobacco companies to clean up their own cigarette butts, forcing them to take responsibility for the plastic waste they produce. Around 4.5 trillion cigarette butts are discarded every year, which has achieved them the status of being the most littered object in the world. Great. So it's reassuring to see countries start to hold these industries more accountable. A UN report in January found that the ozone layer is expected to recover by 2040. Decades ago, we discovered that human activity was causing a hole in the ozone layer, allowing harmful ultraviolet rays from the sun to pass through. So a global agreement was made to stop using harmful chemicals that were damaging the ozone layer, and now it's on track for a full recovery. Moving into February, the EU voted to make a stand against greenwashing. They found that over 50% of green claims are vague misleading or just straight up made up. This makes it impossible for consumers to make informed decisions. By putting an end to this, companies are encouraged to take meaningful steps to show customers that they actually do care about the planet. France also banned deep sea mining, joining Spain, New Zealand, Germany and a number of Pacific Island nations. Since then, the UK has also banned all deep sea mining in its waters and is calling for an international halt to deep sea mining activities. This could be great news for our precious marine life that need us now more than ever. And that brings me on to the next story in February. Moving to Australia has taken a landmark environmental decision by rejecting a proposed coal mine for environmental reasons for the first time in history. The coal mine was planned only about six miles from the Great Barrier Reef, which would cause unacceptable levels of risk to one of the largest reef ecosystems in the world. The rejection came after over 9,000 public submissions opposed the project, emphasizing the growing global concern for preserving natural ecosystems against industrial developments. People power. In March, the UN voted to hold highly polluting countries to account. The bill was proposed by Vanuatu, a small island nation at significant risk due to rising sea levels as a result of climate change, and it was supported by over 120 countries. Under the new law, countries who don't take sufficient measures to reduce their climate impact will face consequences from the international community. In another blow for highly polluting countries, Thailand also announced it would ban all imports of plastic waste, encouraging countries to take responsibility for their own plastic. Wealthy countries often export their plastic to developing countries instead of reducing or recycling the waste themselves. By banning imports, Thailand might encourage these countries to tackle the problem of plastic waste rather than just send it elsewhere. No more out of sight, out of mind. Taking another journey to... 26 Australian species that used to be at risk of extinction have recovered. This recovery, a result of targeted conservation strategies, includes 15 mammals, 8 birds, and various other species like frogs, a reptile, and a fish. A study found that the species no longer meet the criteria to be considered endangered, and many of them are now steadily increasing in population too. In April, Ireland announced the rehabilitation of 80,000 acres of valuable peatland habitat, which will be one of Europe's largest environmental projects. Peat wetlands are rare sites which are ecologically invaluable, storing carbon and creating homes for many endangered species. Peat has often been mined as a fuel or for fertilizer, meaning many of these ecosystems are degraded. Bringing them back to their former glory will be great for the climate and for wildlife. Over 500 advertising agencies committed to Clean Creative's pledge, refusing to work with fossil fuel companies and other big polluters, encouraging them to clean up their act. Agencies taking the pledge are part of a growing trend prioritizing environmental responsibility and rejecting clients that conflict with their values of combating climate change. And scientists in Australia discovered a fungus that can break down plastic in a matter of weeks. Breaking down plastic is crucial to reducing pollution, especially in oceans and landfills where it accumulates and harms ecosystems. It's not quick enough for industrial use yet, 
but they're exploring ways to speed up the process so who knows what the future holds. And after April, what month is it, Justin? It's gonna be May. Thanks, Justin Timberlake. And in May, Ecuador converted $1.6 billion of its national debt into a Galapagos Nature Conservation Fund. It's called a Debt for Nature Swap, where a country exchanges its national debt for funding to help protect its ecosystems. Loads of countries, including Indonesia and Madagascar, have participated in the swap, but never on such a huge scale as this. The money will help make the Galapagos Islands more resilient to the impacts of climate change and human activity, ensuring the unique species which inhabit the area are protected. Also, wind and solar produce more energy in May than all fossil fuels combined across all EU countries. It was also a great month for indigenous rights as Brazil recognized six new indigenous territories and Hawaii revived indigenous conservation systems to help protect our natural world. Hey June. In June, India's Project Tiger had its 50 year anniversary, sharing the incredible impact it's had on conservation. More than 70% of the world's tiger population now live in India, largely due to the habitat protection that Project Tiger has provided. And these habitats have done more than create a home for wildlife. They've also kept over a million tons of CO2 locked up in trees and out of our atmosphere. The Global Tiger Forum also estimated there's been a 74% increase in wild tiger populations since 2010, after the world's 13 tiger age countries made a global goal to double wild tiger numbers by 2022. Solar power also had a great month around the world. Solar production was on track to overtake oil production for the first time ever. It was also announced that over $1 billion was being spent on solar every day and clean energy investments are expected to make up almost two thirds of energy investments around the world. In July, the US approved the largest offshore wind project in the country off the coast of New Jersey. The project will create 3,000 green jobs, and once completed, it'll produce enough energy to power half a million new homes, with nearly 100 wind turbines. France made a pioneering move by legally banning short-haul flights, where a train journey under two and a half hours exists, aiming to reduce carbon emissions and encourage sustainable travel instead. However, environmentalists argue the law falls short, noting that it excludes key routes and doesn't address the high carbon footprint of private jets. Despite these criticisms, the ban marks a historic shift in domestic travel, with further expansions and stricter regulations on private jet usage being considered for the future. In a massive environmental achievement, Malaysia and Indonesia have successfully halved deforestation rates over the past five years, according to a World Resources Institute report. This progress is especially notable in Indonesia, which saw a 64% decline, and Malaysia with a 57% reduction, as both countries implemented measures against forest fires and limited land clearing for palm oil plantations. In August, youth activists won a landmark climate court case against the state of Montana, claiming the state broke its constitution by allowing polluting companies to operate unchallenged. The right to a clean and healthful environment is enshrined in the state's constitution, and the group of activists, aged 5 to 22, argued that the state was not upholding this. While the impact of this might not be immediate, it sets a precedent which may have far-reaching implications, so perhaps we'll see more wins like this in 2024. Brazil transformed Latin America's largest landfill into a thriving mangrove swamp, Located near Rio de Janeiro, the former landfill has undergone a decade-long restoration, led by the city's garbage collection agency, Comlove. This initiative involved extensive cleanup, replanting mangroves and implementing measures against pollution, resulting in a remarkable environmental turnaround. The rejuvenated area now supports diverse wildlife and serves as a vital carbon sink, showcasing a successful model of ecological rehabilitation. Next is some good news that has us all over 2,000 white rhinos will be released into the wild over the next 10 years, after the largest private captive breeding operation was purchased by an NGO called African Parks, with the help of the South African government, with the intention of gradually releasing and rewilding all the animals. With only 16,000 white rhinos left in the wild, another 2,000 could make a big difference to the conservation of these majestic beasts. China also installed the largest wind turbine in the world, with its enormous blades over 100 meters each. It can sometimes generate enough energy in a day to power over 170,000 homes. Moving on to October. In a groundbreaking initiative, nearly 150 indigenous seed collectors from the Amazonian Bioeconomic Seed Network have joined forces to restore the Amazon rainforest with native species. Founded in mid-2021 by members of various indigenous peoples, the network aims to restore an area the size of Greece by 2030. 
Collaborating with Brazil's oldest network of seed collectors, the Zingu Seed Network, they exchange knowledge and techniques vital for ecological restoration. After months of protests, the Netherlands announced plans to form an international coalition to phase out fossil fuel subsidies. This was in response to a report that reveals the Netherlands gives 40 billion euros a year in fossil fuel subsidies. This initiative aims to redirect these funds towards green transitions, support local communities instead. Around this time too, news spread about the largest dam removal project in US history, which is taking place on the Klamath River in Northern California, led by indigenous advocacy and aimed at reviving plummeting salmon populations. This monumental project, demolishing four dams built between 1918 and 1962, is set to restore 400 miles of fish habitat. New research came out in November, which suggested that China may be about to begin a structural decline in emissions. As the biggest polluter in the world by many metrics, China often gets branded as a big problem for climate change, but in 2022, they invested more in renewable energy than the rest of the world combined. Thanks in part to China's contribution, global renewable capacity is likely to triple by the end of the decade. The news has come alongside a report which found a global surge in green jobs, with more people than ever working on developing and installing clean energy solutions all around the world. And in December, we're seeing more incredible solar power expansion as India began construction of the world's largest renewable energy site, and Indonesia plans the biggest floating solar farm in the world. The two sites will produce enough electricity to power almost 20 million homes. The US also made its bigger ever investment in railways, pledging $8.2 billion to develop 10 new public transport projects across the country. And at the time of writing this script, the US has just announced a plan to ban logging in 32 million acres of old growth forests by 2025, aiming to protect millions of these carbon storing trees that are vital in our fight against climate change. So there we have it, some of the best good news stories from 2023 that you might have missed. I was actually going to write an outro, but Rissi, who helped me research the stories in this list, actually sent me a voice note that I feel like summarizes it way better than I could. So I'm just going to play you his voice memo instead. I'll put some epic music behind it too. I just find it wild that we're coming up with so many like weird and wacky solutions, as well as all the big stuff, like the improvements in solar. Like, there's so much stuff we're doing to try and fix the problem. And yeah, it's such a small percentage of like human productivity. I mean, like I, I suspect probably about 0.01% of human productivity is actually being put towards trying to address the climate crisis, which is nothing. Like the amount of people actually actively working on trying to solve the environmental problems. Teeny, tiny, tiny. And yet we're coming up with so much stuff. If we increase that to like, considering it's an existential threat, maybe spending at least 1% of total human productivity maybe even 10%. Like, think how quickly these things would, would progress. It's just nuts that we do so much with so little. And also nuts that we're doing it with so little. As I mentioned, way more good stuff happened too. We just couldn't fit it all into this script. So please drop any more good news I missed in the comment section. And if you want to keep up to date with all the good things happening in 2024, hit subscribe and drop this video a like, and I'll see you next year.